Um, good morning, uh, good morning, everyone. We uh, we need to go. It's one minute um, to uh, eleven. Um, uh, my name is uh, Raymond. I will host the session. I'm a QGIS contributor. I especially wore this uh, shirt today, so I can announce all the QGIS speakers today. And the first one is uh, Marco Bernasocchi, and he will um, uh, tell about uh, Python and QGIS and uh, how to do that the proper right way, right? Yeah. Not proper, just how to do that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hey, hi, everybody. Um, thank you, Raymond. So. Um, I'm I'm in QGIS, the co-chair of the project, and um, OpenGIS. I'm the director. So OpenGIS is a small company in Switzerland. Uh, we are a distributor across the whole country, but that's not what this talk is about. Um, the talk is about Python. Python came there, came to to um, QGIS in version 0 0.9, and um, well. Python bindings, but the most important point of the commit message of that version was that shapefiles were already giving troubles back then. So for the people that were in my talk Monday, I did the same joke, but it's a very important joke. Shapefiles always create problems. So um, this talk is going to be about optimizing. Oops, sorry, I'm going to. I'm in the way probably. Uh, optimizing um, your use of PyQGIS. So there are some neat tricks that allow you to write less code, to, to reuse the code that you write, um, <coughs> to, make it, uh, to make it easier for you actually to, to move on. Um, there are various things that I will look into. We'll look into common functions and, and decorators and all that, but let's go step by step. So there are various collections of common PyQGIS helpers. They are a bit hard to find. That's why you need to get my slides later on and you have the links and everything. Um, the discussion there would be, well, couldn't we have something that is reusable uh, so that people that are doing uh, the same thing over and over and over can do it quicker? The answer by the developer were, was like, well, yeah, there are, and that's uh, how you can do them. The goal was, um, first, we, we needed to, to make the API flexible enough, nice enough, so that we could, you could uh, build upon it and then implement Pythonic constructs so that people that are used to work with Python would feel at home in an API that usually comes from uh, C++. So one of the first things that was done um, is uh, to create some, uh, some decorators. If you are Python developers, you probably do know decorators or the thing that start with at in front. If you don't know what a decorator is, it's a job where you put up very nice curtains. Uh, or in Python world, it's something that decorates another thing. So you get uh, to write your own function and call it uh, with in front and decorator at QGIS function, for example. And it makes some magic around it that will make QGIS recognize that as an internal function. Um, it helps you basically write code that it's easier to read and write, so it takes away boilerplate code. Usually you would be writing two, three, four, fifteen more lines, uh, and now instead you're just uh, using one more line. In, in a very <coughs> short way, it is syntactic sugar. Okay? How does it look like in QGIS? Well, uh, in QGIS we have this um, expression functions. They are at QGIS function. You see here is my, the body of my function with um, a documentation for the function itself. And, well, surprise, surprise, it's a sum function. It does a sum. Uh, obviously, I could have made a division and make it much more fun. But uh, I wanted to be a bit consistent. So my QGIS function called sum will basically just do a sum. Uh, super dumb example, but it get to the point. Uh, I can have uh, easy documentation, and up here I can say, well, uh, automatic arguments, uh, which are going to be taken by, by whatever the sum function takes, and I'm going to put it in the group custom. What will that make? Well, it will make that QGIS processing toolbox, um, oh, sorry, no. I don't have the picture for it. What will it make? That in the expression editor, where you have all the functions, you will see uh, in the custom group your own 
uh, sum function. Super handy for functions that are more complex than just a sum, because a sum, you just have it, but uh, really, really quick way to just get your things quickly into QGIS. And the interesting part is that these are installation dependent, so it's not tied to the project, it's tied to your QGIS installation. Processing. Uh, processing toolbox, and I'm going to be talking a bit fast because um, there's plenty of slides, plenty of things you can do with it. And so processing um, is, is a good way to, to get a lot of things to be done repetitively. Um, you can um, you can have data pipelines. Uh, you don't need to create uh, GUI, so it's a it's a very handy way to work. But it used to have a lot of uh, um, of boilerplate code. That's why we introduced uh, processing algorithms. You can distribute an algorithm um, that inherits from algorithm, uh, and you define what inputs, what outputs you want, uh, how, what the column prefixes are going are to be, and then you have your name method and an init algorithm method. And this is the one that gets executed whenever from here, from the processing toolbox, you choose the algorithm. So super handy way if you have tools that, um, that, uh, that are to be redistributed, uh, you can also distribute them as plugins. We just include the algorithm, so you can distribute a plugin that is nothing else than an algorithm provider. You see, it looks good, but just using add alg is a much quicker way to get the same thing done in a much more Pythonic way, and that is where all, all the code is kind of going. So we are trying to get this old version of the things into new, more Pythonic uh, way. The main part here is the add alg. You give it a name, give it a label, and, and then your code uh, your actual code of the algorithm comes. So you're, you're not doing all this boilerplate code anymore. Validity checks. Um, here also, we have a add check dot register. You can register validity checks uh, where you say what type of validity check it is and then you can write your, poor, your pure Python implementation of the validity check and uh, and just have it available in, in, uh, in your scripts very, very easily. Things do go wrong. Um, in the old, in, uh, in QGIS 2.0 API, um, you were able to do this kind of thing, where you were saying, well, from point as point, you get a point, and then from a line as point, you get a point. It's a zero, zero point, and that's why Null Island is such a beautiful place in the world, and so many people want to go there and put their data there. But it's probably not what this person was expecting. Um, what we did in QGIS 3, so with, with changing all the APIs, that we got much stricter in, uh, in throwing errors. So we do not just default to, to an error data types, but we actually tell you, um, whoop, well, no, that's a mistake. What you're trying to do is not correct. You cannot, from a line string, get a point. And that is really good, because error allow you to make your code much better. You, you can handle an error. I can go in a try, and I can catch it, and, and then say, uh, well, you shouldn't be trying to, to, get, to do that. Maybe what you're looking for is a centroid. And then you can go on. So errors are, are a good thing. Um, and, um, and we've been working on, on these kind of things. Multipoints, same thing. Now you're getting uh, index errors if you don't have. So everywhere across the board, we have been improving the, the error uh, uh, kind of reporting part. So we're not just giving default data back. This is how you should be doing it. Try. I try to get a geometry out. And if I get an index error, well, uh, Input line string needs to have at least four points. So proactively catching possible error. And we stand again. 
Um, atomic operations, also very interesting thing. Um, you can, uh, we used to, to have uh, to do start editing and then all the old thing and then uh, uh, something went wrong and we got uh, zero division error. So we, we here as well, oh, let me go first. Oh, no, one too much. Here as well, we had a lot of code to deal with problems, uh, very verbose, and things could quickly go kaboom. And that is why we introduced the use of with. Um, <coughs> with um, allows us to much quickly, to much more quickly say, well, with edit and the layer, and then work on this layer. So we are in a, in a closed environment where we are actually dealing uh, with a layer that needs to be changed, and we are um, in a place where changes are committed automatically if no error occurs. If an error occurs, we get out of the width and we can deal with it. Super handy um, if, if, like here, we, we have an error or, um, or zero, division by zero, so there are no changes that are applied. So we have automatically, with much easier code, we have also much more uh, convenience in the code. When we work with um, geometries, um, also we can um, we can use um, so we can create here a geometry the, the same way we always did for vertex and um, in line in vertices, and then we get all the the points. So we are just iterating through geometries. Same thing for multipoint. So for point in multipoint parts, we're getting all the parts of a, of a multipolygon. Pretty, pretty easy. Um, representing points, doing good, doing good. Uh, representing points, um, if this is our QGIS original point, the coordinate system is a Swiss coordinate system, in case you ask what kind of bizarre numbers these are. That's what uh, we used to get uh, as a representation. Super handy, I definitely know that this is my house. Um, uh, this is not my house, but still, it's in Switzerland, so it potentially could be. Since QGIS 3.2, we have now a much nicer representation, which tells me, well, that's a QGIS point, and these are the coordinates. Obviously, could be improved, we could also put the, the um, uh, CRS, but uh, that you can get from the layer, from the layer type. So, uh, super handy way to not see a memory address, but to actually see coordinates, which is what we tendentially are interested in when we are asking for what, what is this point all about. Outlook, well, exceptions are good, I mentioned before. Exceptions help you fix the problem. Exception help in case of data corruption. Uh, so we want more exceptions. So we're gonna build in, build in more and more uh, exceptions for most we want to have exceptions instead of return values. Point zero zero is not the result of a line S point. So that's the kind of things that we, we want to change. Easier initialization. Um, we do still have a lot of boilerplate code that is uh, required to get a standalone application up and running. One of the goals is to reduce that. In the Pythonic constructs, um, we want more decorators, more iterators. Um, that's really cool. And then, obviously, um, nice API, but that's that coming from, from C++. Uh, we, there has been a major, major rework of things in uh, uh, when we move from 2 to 3. That's why it took a bit longer to change from two to three because we took the opportunity to clean up all our uh, previous API that uh, that were maybe not so perfect. Not that now they are perfect, but they are more perfect. So I've um, been talking pretty fast. That is because I do have a bit of code to show you. And let's see if live demos, it's my fourth presentation at this Phosphor G. So I think I can try a live demo. Um, and see if uh, if the word is with me. So here you see I created. Oh, that's a, 
Let me give me give me a second. Up. Let's get away from here and mirror the screen. Uh, Yay! Technology is with me. Um, QGIS, if you don't know it, bad. Uh, <laughs> so here you see, I, sorry camera, um, here I have created a script that I loaded in right clicking, I, or pull it in right click and add, add the script. And now we're gonna go here, right click it again and say uh, edit script. And now we can have a look at what, no I need to stay here to to scroll around. So you see this script basically is the script that I showed on Monday, uh, Monday yeah it was Mon no, on Wednesday, uh, whatever, the first day of the conference. Um, I showed this script working where I can, from a CVS file, um, I can uh, just give it to the, to the processing tool, it will parse the file uh, according to a string that I, I give uh, to the tool and it will generate uh, requests to the Nomina team geocoder. Here there is also Google API. I'm not really sure if that's something you are allowed to do under the terms of uh, usage of the Google API. I'm not saying you have to do it. I did it as a pure experimental thing. Um, but basically, my Nomina team geocoder is a class. Um, my Google geocoder is a class that just goes to the API sends the API key and the string that I create somewhere, which we'll see uh, later, and gets the answers back you doing some network calls and uh, basically it sends a text and it gets coordinates back. And um, when we process the response, we create points. But the interesting part is this part here. Let's put it a bit higher up. So we go. You see that all I need to do you say, well, it is an algorithm that is called geocode. Obviously, the title needs to be translatable because we want to do a thing well and we want to make it nice. The group is example script and the group label is geocode. And then we start at alg input. You see I have a type, algorithm source. The name is input, label is address layer, uh, default is whatever. Um, then another input, which is of type expression, a QGIS expression. Then I have another, uh, which is used for whatever the, the because Google and Nomina team use different uh, query uh, strings, so I need to, to be able to adapt that. And then um, I have another type, which is an enumeration, uh, that's a selection between Google and Nomina team, and the default is Google. And then I have a string, which is the API key for Google, because Nomina team works also without. And then I have a sync, which is where my things get put into from the algorithm. If I go further down, you'll see that, um, oh, let's go like this, then there is, a, oh, yeah, that's okay. We have, I have the method geocode, which takes, uh, the parameters that we will see where they get set. And um, here I do, I choose if it's Nomina team, I create a Nomina team geocoder. If it's geocoder, I create a, a Google. So it's just logic to, to make the selection between the two. And down here, you see that uh, I'm iterating and asking uh, network requests, but that's not the interesting part. Now let's close this. Technically, I could run it from here directly. But the idea is that you see that uh, here, hope I'm not too much in the way, Oop. here I have uh, my group that I defined before in the inputs with the algorithm that I can now right click, well I can double click it but uh, as a demo it's right click is nicer. Um, <coughs> you see that I have an automatically graphical user interface that appears. I have my address layer, I have my expression which automatically gets the button to go to the expression editor. I have um, my um, service, so the enumeration where I can just click 
and I see I have Google and Nomina team, and then I could make it run. Um, thing is that I would have to <coughs> configure up here, I guess. Let's try to make it run. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I need to change this. Ah, uh, no, I need to load the other thing, but I'll just do the easy way, uh, which is, no, I don't have it here. Um, oops. Well, yeah. Um, basically, you can make it run, and it creates a map. I can look for the files. Just give me a second. <laughs> uh, Wrong talks, Phosphor-G, Geocoder. Here we go. Up. And then we do run. <coughs> and it runs. And now we do need to go somewhere. Uh, I'm in the wrong projection, I guess. I forgot about this part. But uh, basically, the algorithm runs and will uh, we'll just create your, your output. It's a live demo. Obviously, not everything could go, wrong, could go correctly. But I guess uh, it's 20 past, so pretty on time. Thank you very much. <laughs>Any questions? Yeah. If you need many questions. Yeah, there should be a one. Well, let's have this one for the questions. <laughs> Hi. Um, do you uh, produce a report for the uh, log uh, of the matching address and non-matching addresses, or? Uh, yes. Good morning, thank you for your presentation. Uh, if I get it right, uh, one of mm, the main benefit of the approach that was described is that uh, you can uh, use uh, a prepared uh, graphic user interface for the input of the algorithm. Uh, my question uh, is, uh, it is possible to embed uh, the same approach uh, into a standalone application? I mean, a PyQGIS based application, but outside QGIS. There are plans. There are plans, but not yet. Yeah. It's, Thank you. Uh, there is a QAP on this that has been discussed, if I'm not wrong. Martin, you, yeah, he's doing like this, so I'm right. Yeah. There are plans, but it's not there yet. If you want. No. He has nothing to add. <laughs> he's the, the one that does most. Python. See with this next year. Pro yeah. <laughs> Any more questions? No. Oh. There. Over here. Yeah. There. Oh, sorry. That's all right. Hi, thanks for your presentation. Can be this algorithm is embedded in project files so that it can be distributed together with uh, project file to other users? Uh, scripts can yeah. be embedded in the project, yes. From 2. Point, uh, sorry, 3.6, okay. maybe it somewhere eventually just... recently, okay. you can embed those in the project Great. as well, the script, yeah. Script and models as well, yeah. Over there. Um, are you now able to uh, install the expressions that you write uh, in a place where they would, in the installation itself, so that they would be available across projects and across users? That's how it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, the scripts you showed, uh, in fact, the, the context in which you execute the script here is in the QGIS desktop application. Mm -hmm. So when the Python code reads an exception, it it's, seems to be well catched mm -hmm. in the context of this. Mm -hmm. But I found that when you run a standalone Python script, mm -hmm. then you need a QGIS application and all the stuff. Then often, when you raise uh, an exception in the Python code from a point which is called from the C++, mm -hmm. then it crash. 
So, are you aware of these situations? And uh, <laughs> I think that's have you some guideline to avoid this? I think that's one of the questions I'll relate to Martin. Are you ah. aware of it? But probably, yeah, we've seen this happening. And every time you go from Python to C++, there is a layer of uh, conversion. And you have yes, two uh, situations that are different memory management, different garbage collecting strategies. So there is uh, the gilling so, place. So okay. Is it just a bit annoying? <laughs> yeah, there are plenty of things that can explode, but uh, then so tendentially they don't explode too often. Uh, but uh, when you're out of QGIS, they are definitely a little bit less uh, taken care of. Yeah. OK, thanks. All right, uh, thank you. I think we need to uh, quit now because yep. it's uh, five today, minutes to today the Today afternoon, session. two o'clock in, I don't know exactly what room, because we asked to get a bigger room. There is going to be QGS on the road, a lot of features uh, in an interesting way told by Maya. Thank you. All right, thank you.